All right. Okay. We are out. We came out here to, uh, today to uh, talk about our, the uh, Johnson Bonds family, uh, our history. Uh, and Uncle L.D. here with my mother, Jimmy Roof. And we're actually at the slave quarters, Dan's Way. We're right here sitting on the railroad track. They used to come through the community that was a, basically a, a slave community. And over here to the left is where we have the slave quarters. And right now we're right at the railroad track with Uncle L.D. And my mother, and Uncle L.D. is going to give us some history on Dan's Way. slave force. Some 23 years ago, we started a family reunion. We are a part of the center of Dan Robinson slave, and we are trying to make history to let our young people know where we came from. Now, it's, 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 we can't tell you where we come from, from Africa, but we can tell you where we come from, from America. This is where our grandparents came from. Our oldest known grandparents was named Henry Robinson and Mariah Robinson. They was born here on this particular plantation. They had five children. The first one was Wash Robinson. The second one was Rhoda Robinson. The third one was my grandmother, uh, Martha Robinson. The next one was Laura Robinson, and the, and the youngest one was John Robinson. These was the descendants of Henry and Mariah Robinson descendants. Now, we are the grandparents of Martha Robinson, and we are here to take uh, an example of where we came from. And today we are trying to get up history. And we hope by the end of our collecting history, we'll be able to give to our young people a good idea and a good thought of where we came from. And I'm a member of a family of about 23. My father married a lady who was named Millie Park. He had 13 children by Millie Park. We had another family by the name of Matt Bond. That's where the Bonds came from. And in, in, in the two families, they had about 23 children. And we are their descendants, and we are trying to get up history. So this is our first beginning, our first start. We're going to take some more pictures of the Robinson Slave Corps. Talk about the railroad track. Talk about the railroad track. Uh, according to what, what I was told by one of the Robinson descendants, years ago, they had so much land until they had a road came through here. And they named it Danway because it came by Dan Robinson Place. And the railroad that came through was from Oberlacher to Rono. And uh, this was one of the stops. And it was a big farming community. And uh, the name is Denway after our father's slave master, Dan Robinson. And we're here now at the Dan Robinson Railroad Stop, named after Dan. We're still 
left to tell a story. According to where what one of the relatives just told us, this is about where the old slave home house was situated. He said it was growing down years ago. He don't know. He's older than I am, but he don't know exactly where it was. But according to what he told the old home house was in this particular state of the Robinson property. Pretty much at the old slave home quarter where but owned all of the slaves, which the old man Dan Robinson lived. And let me tell you a little something about the old man Dan Robinson. The first Dan Robinson. Now they said he told me, one of the, the Robinsons told me this. This place was owned by the Indians. And they wanted it. And the priest came in and offered to buy. He wouldn't sell it to him. The next time they come in, they offered to buy. He wouldn't sell it to him. And the third time they come in, they took it. So this place was watered by old man Dan Robinson and his crew. Now that's why they could get off to so much land. They didn't buy the land. They took the land. And that's how a lot of the old white folks got over to what they had because they squatted land in this particular place. All this land in here was squatted from the Indians. And it didn't cost them one penny no more just to fight and out demand the Indians. And that's the way they come in contact with the Robinson Court. And when they got them, the squatters got, got squatters right. Then they passed the law saying if nobody, the Indian was gone. Yeah. Nobody else owned that land. The law passed. This is originally your land. Your land. Because he done took over anyway. He did it. And, and they didn't go by their name. And when they squatted it, they marked corner to corner. And all in your corner was your land. And if anybody else came in after then and got on that part of the land where you had marked off, where you was invading their rights and on their right. property. On their property. You know what I picked up a lot of system I'm talking about? I used to read every slave note I get my hands on. <laughs> I used to collect them and read them. Every slave note I get my hands on. Well, I can't. I'm going to put them on the way down here. I remember going to the place. I remember. Wherever we went, I remember going, but I can't remember where it was. Picture on it. Now, back this way. We don't know where. You got your you got camera room. Back this way, we don't know exactly where. It was the place where the slaves lived. They had that camp. Back this way. And uh, that's where they lived. And let me tell you a little something about the slaves. When the wall came. The Yankees would come through and they would take all the Jews and all the important things away from the white folks. And they would worry, the white folks would worry about that silver. And all that jewelry would be taken away from them. They didn't know what to do with it. So, uh, some of the old mysteries colored mystery. The mystery don't worry about it. They turn it over to her. And they had a big place there where they kept all the babies. 
And they took that silver and stuff and put it under the mat where the baby slept. And when the Yankees come in, they went there and looked in the door. See them with a bunch of babies? And my God, what a bunch of black babies. <laughs> and what on about that <laughs> That's all they saw. That's all they saw. And they say that it's treasure. Treasure. So, even at that, the slaves were, were some good. Now, I don't know a whole lot about I didn't hear a whole lot about old man Dan Robinson. Uh, about three or four months ago, I heard a white man mention Dan Robinson. And he said this about it. That someday you could talk to him, <laughs> and he would tell you things that just make you blurry. Then in other days, you talk to him, he'd tell you things that would make your ears go. So I don't know what kind of man he is. I never heard too much about him, but that was one of the things that I heard. Some days he would talk nice, talk nice things. And then some days he would talk about things that was, was, was exciting. Scary things. Scary things. So, evidently, he was summer folk. Right. He was summer folk. But now he has a, a son, or not a son, a grandson, who lives down in the valley. Very fine man named Dan Robinson. And he ran a meat market for years and years. And he's the one allowed me to come out and go to the uh, slave cemetery for it. He told him where it was now. And uh, that was what this man was talking about just now. So, this is history. And it's something that we can always, if we put it on record, we can always keep it. We can always know where our kin folk came from. This is the place where Mariah Robinson, now on the way she was born, but her children. Uncle Watt, Aunt Rhody, Aunt Lara, my grandmama, and Uncle John was born right here on this place, maybe right down the street. Now, let me tell you something here about the slaves. A big healthy man, they used him as a stockman. Now, Grandpa, Grandpa Robinson didn't just have children by Grandma Rye. He had children by other women. Now, it's three, at least three more other families of, of Robinson. Now, one, one set. was sold to Georgia, to Gavisville, Georgia. He was sold to the Tatum. Now, I remember Uncle Dan Tatum. And that crowd, they was hey brothers and sisters to my grandmama Robert, grandmama met Robert. Now, they, they were Robinson Robert, but after they went to the Tatum slave, they became to be Tatum. And then there was other other women. Now, old man Dave Sludge's granddaddy was, was, was Grandpa Dick Robinson's son. That's where Mon Lump name coming to. She got to be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> See all of this. See all of man, you talk about y'all don't know, but I do. See all of this is different. I know about, I, I remember Dave Sludge. I remember Dwight Robinson. I remember those pictures. Okay, here, here, here's the slurs. My grandmama was half sister's brother. She was half sister's brother. And so this is when we are dead and gone. You need to go back to y'all's children, grandchildren, and grandchildren, all down to the through the generation, if they keep it going. And, and I thought about it is the chum of the grandma. Her name ain't Margaret. Margaret. Ain't Margaret. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I got to think about 
And I got to think about the granddad on our call too. Because we call him the... This was Father, this is Grandpa Ed's grandma. Yeah, hey, Mom. Hey, Mom was living, Mom. When he said he's over, they live it. Live it. Live it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is what, and Margaret was living his mother. Yeah. Right, right. Hey, Margaret was living with Margaret. Right. Hey, Margaret. Because they talk about Liz. Hey, Liz. Hey, Joseph. Hey, Minnie. And there's another one I can't think of now. And Uncle Ben. Ben Sharma. I don't know his name. In the and then another one, I can't think of his name, another boy. Mm -hmm. Well, Peter's telling us that I was trying to get some uh, information on it. Okay, we're, we're at the home of Uncle um, L.V. Johnson and his wife, Lucille Johnson. Uh, we're going to continue our documentation of our the Johnson Barnes reunion in our history. And we're going to now let Uncle L.V. go into the specific details of our history. So we're going to go on with Uncle Elsie. Again, I must say, we left to tell the story. Years ago, history was memorized before it was written. In many cases, even after it was written, the record was confused. But this kind of history, or even all kind of history, the record ought to always be kept straight as possible. I remember once in the Bible where they thought they had the true history of Israel, but they tore down the walls of the church and they found the document that had been lost. And when he read it, it was almost completely different from the one they had. So they praised God to have gotten the real document, and they went back to the real document. So as far as we can know about, I'm trying to bring you the real document of the Johnson and Bond Family Union. The Johnson and Bond Family Union began in the year of 1972. The Reverend Monroe Johnson his wife and family with nine children had a family get together in Cleveland, Ohio. And in this get together, he was inspired to have it on a much broader level by inviting his other sisters and brothers and family relatives. There had been other family unions in Fairfax by his brother LZ, but only local level. Uh, the Johnson and Bond family got to get together. That is real star on the national level in the year of 1973 in Louisville, Kentucky. Since then, it has grown in leaps and bounds. It was the year of 1979 in Atlanta, Georgia, when I saw on the building where we were entertained for lunch. When I first saw this name, Johnson and Bond family, the union. Personally, I have referred to this family union as Johnson and Bond. The two groups are the sons and daughters of one man, Elder Johnson. The two groups are mothered by two women, Millie and Maddie. The Johnson used their father's name, Johnson. The Bond used their mother's name, Bond. They are, they all are Johnson, and one big family. Happy family. The family tree uh, is as it was handed down to me. The only known members of our union was Mariah and Minnie, or Dick Robinson, who so I was named this the Henry and the Mariah family union tree. They were slaves and natives of a small stock town on the central Georgia Railroad about 12 miles north of Oberaka and about 3 miles west of Casita, Alabama. This place was and still is known as Danway, 
This man was named Dan, wait, because of the one man who owned this entire section of land. Thousands of acres. He was one of the largest slave masters in James County. He was named Dan, and the road that went through his plantation was called by the way of Dan. So they named that railroad stop and community Danway. This part of the land is located in the south west corner of Chambers County. It extends into the borders of the town of Lee and Tallapoosie. From this planet came our oldest relatives. They were slaves owned by slave master Dan Robertson, R-O-B-E-R-S-O-E. Henry and Marie. Marie, family consists of five children that I have record of. These five were mothered by Marie, and their names are as follows. White Robinson, Rudy Robinson, Laura Robinson, Martha Robinson, and John Robinson. The oldest two, Wash and Rudy, was by her first marriage. The other three was by her second marriage, Henry Rock. But the two husbands was half brothers. Her first husband was sold to a slave owner in Gabbyville, Georgia, by the name of Taylor. Henry Rock was not only father children by his wife, Marie, but according to my understanding, he was children by other women. This was a common custom in slavery. So there were some four or five different families from these two men. The first mention names are really where the one I know more about than others. The Peters I know of them. They were my grandmother's half brothers and sisters. There was another group I was told about after I was grown. This was Aaron Slade. They were the first cousins and had sisters and brothers of the Robinson. Marie Robinson, child number four, Martha, is our grandmother. I have the record of his two sons and three daughters, Lonnie Gates, Laura Robinson, Elba Johnson, and the Lady Channel, and they repeat. Child number three, Elba Johnson, is the father of the Johnson and Bond family union. There are other relatives I would like to mention who are connected with Henry and Marie Beverly Union. There is one known brother of Henry Robinson. His name was Louis Robinson. This set of Robinson had a large family union in Oglaka each year. I met many of them. There was another brother by the name of Elba. I don't know any of his relatives. Another event I must mention, I was told this by White Robinson. He was told by White Robinson. Later, they all were Robinson. But after freedom, many of the slaves changed their name to Robinson, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N, Robinson. So this is where we still our family. There were some remaining Robinsons at one of the Lewis Robinson family unions, I was told. Some of our learners went by the name of Robert. So I have the record there was Robinson, Robinson, and Robert. And yet they all are the same family. The family Harry. They were most tall, stocky. Long legged, long arms, young waist, medium brown or light black, good hair, smart and gentle and talented. Most of the men were commoners and brick masons were rock men. The women were good cooks, social, big entertainers, low that rhetoric. He was always some few which had good. Education. There was one relative born the third year after, after freedom. He was born 
in game. He was called Lemon, but his name was Lemon Horn Robert. He had the face of a white man, but he was the color of an apple. His knowledge was superior to the average educator of his day. The Robinson was favorable people, but if stirred up, he was mean as snake. Another area that I almost left out. And it's most important. They have always been members of the gospel family. They have no need to mention the many friends, fields, or professional the family is in, and they are a part of us. Part of. It all goes back to the Marie and, and Henry Robinson area. And this is directly of the Johnson and Bond family music. Thank you so much. The oldest known member of our union was Henry Hart, and Scott Peter, and Marie Rock. So I have named this the Henry and Marie family tree. And I have a church, Bethel. My grandfather would set out a tree at Grandmother Marie's grave. That tree stands there today. That's our family tree. Very awesome.